Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Telltale Kale. And absurd. I. From Sir Gentleman. And uh, we're going to do a playthrough of Call of Cthulhu, the Dark Corners of the Earth. Uh, it's been quite a while since I played this game. I did a playthrough of it four years ago, and I don't really remember a whole lot of it except the ending and the beginning, so. Yes, having never played, I like, well, never played any of it. I'm terrified. Yeah, I even a little bitch when it comes to horror games, so sure. this will be fun. I'm not. So, just credit of uh, movies in the beginning here, but there are loads of fun. Oh, wait, wrong one. Shit, we're already off to a great start now. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Yes. Alright, there we go. So, we're doing private investigator. Too bad I can't do, like, mythos specials. What is that just like really hard? It's like the hardest difficulty you could do on here. And uh, I haven't played on anything other than Private Investigator. Uh, so I have no idea how hard Mythos Specialist is for sure, but I have a feeling that it's ridiculous. Considering that a lot of this game's already pretty ridiculous. So, Arkham Asylum, February 16th, 1922. Wait, is that now? Oh, that's my last case opened in me a new fear, a real fear, a fear of myself, what I am, and of what I've always been. This All that I was is now lost. Hope, purpose, pleasure, all meaningless. I now walk in the shadows between worlds, and it is there I have finally glimpsed upon what lives in the dark corners of the earth. Voice comes in like Christian Bale. Dude, it's already a sign. That's, that's pretty bad. I like the way you smile at me, baby. Oh, I know where this is going. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, don't tell me, don't tell me. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I don't know. He's gonna give a speech. Oh. 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 What a twist. This doctor doesn't look like a good guy. Yeah, I'm not sure I trust him with my mental stability either. Okay, now I can hide like it's dead right now. Well, I mean, super low resolution cursor. It looks like it's almost written in pen. At that time, all he had was fountain pen, so they gave that guy a sharp object. A mentally unstable person a sharp object. The oh wow, that was really fast to read. Game tips are currently active. Don't die. Yeah. It's a pro tip. Don't die. Thank you, tips. Fact tips. Six and a half years ago. Oh. Well, sorry to tell you, mate, but six and a half <coughs> years from now, you're kind of boned. <coughs> Things you look at car you got there. September 6, 1915. That looks foreboding. What is it, a church? General place of good service. Robert, this had better be good. What's the beef? Sorry, Jack. We had to call. This fellow will only talk to you. Name's Victor Holt. Don't know any. Victor? He's the leader of this weird cult that moved in here a few months back. Got about 20 followers. They've been causing trouble all over town. Stealing, going through folks' trash. Hanging around outside people's homes at all hours. No one ever presses charges, though. They're a screwy bunch. The 
it got the local scan. How damn it. So tonight, we were just passing, you know, doing the normal rounds, when we heard gunshots fired from their property. Gunshots? Get Hang gunshots. on there. No one said anything about gunshots. Yeah, no, Who we're we getting out of here. Danger? Yeah, oh, just me, Nichols, and a few new recruits. Well, that's just great. Lead the way, Robert. I better check out this crazy gang. The whole Doom 3 head intro bullshit. <laughs> oh, God. Well, wow, I'm a sensitivity. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. Dude, look at that shag wagon. Oh, yeah. Pick up all the ladies. Nah. Dude, look at that bloom lighting. <laughs> lighting effects. This is some Unreal 3 nonsense. How you doing, kid? Good, sir. Good, sir. Is it true what they say about you? It depends on what they're saying. That you've cracked cases <laughs> where there was no evidence. Wait, there was no evidence. You shouldn't believe everything nah, you hear. Just point the finger. Uh, right. <laughs> I was like, he did it. They were like, okay. Jack, Officer Nichols will brief you at the top. Be careful. Jack, I can't breathe through my nose. You gotta send help. Shots fired. Something must be wrong. I think I saw him with Officer Armstrong. Evening, Jack. Oh, Glad you could join the freak show. How's it's it exactly looking, Henry? Same. I don't like this one bit, Jack. <laughs> Check the mustache. alley on the right. Victor Holt's over there in the shadows. Scared. He's waiting for you. Can we trust him? Nope, but we've got you covered. You better take it slowly, though. At least he gets a bit twitchy. <laughs> nope, this is sketch. That doesn't look sketchy as well. better hurry, Jack. Oh, 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 oh. Shake the red out of my eye. Shake the red out of my eye. Come on, Jack. Get your shit together. What? Wait, 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 wait. Look back at that. Is he going to Is there a body? Oh, okay. Now people are dying. People is dying. Dying. Making a scene. All this intense action, better search. Wouldn't want to miss any evidence. Mm. Crazy art. That's an unusual design. That's an unusual design. Looks like a church. You know? A powerful Tentacles. painting of some cosmic horror. Cosmic. This Old blasphemous times. image makes me feel uneasy. It's blasphemous image. It's not blasphemous, it's just squid. The board has been used to illustrate a diagram. A diagram? Diagram of what, though? As I continue to translate the narcotic fragments, I become more and more eager to contact my Yithian masters. These beings truly are gods to us. Their intellect and knowledge surpasses ours in ways impossible to comprehend. I know now just how insignificant mankind is in the universe, a doomed and simple species thrown up as a side effect of an experiment by the elder things. It is a blessing that such flawed creatures as ourselves have such a short and limited future. Way to be positive there, Jim Bob. You have. Well, it was a church at one time, I can tell you that much. I How was it? Oh, go for it. Oh, stained glass. Wait, does stained glass just make it a church? Yes. Maybe he had some good decorative that one to the design right. stuff. I don't know where that was going. Rats! It's an old stove. Shit. Where's your flashlight? The F. Or T for torch if you're not. Over there, on the left. Nope. Nothing. Weird. What? I'll hold uh, F and I can strafe back and forth. That's random. That is random. Is that like a thing? Apparently. Strafe to not die. Die, you pathetic bastards! Pathetic uh, bastard. 
an old grandfather clock. Why look at the time? Okay, why light? Good. See that one to the right taking Gets cover. Me. Kill him. He's taking cover. Kill. Don't kill him. He is my friend. It won't. Okay. It won't open. It won't open. I should look safe. Are you sure this building is decoded, sir? Sure. I'd like to break uh, all the regulations you're breaking. You. Well, that's not nice. I better keep my distance from the window, or I'll end up like this nut job. Empty ammo boxes and spent shells. Oh, I'm stare here for too long. An old warden. Happen. Really? Oh, I gotta check this out. Check. Shh. Oh, shit. Staring at dead bodies makes me. We get the fuck out. Oh. Wait, is it like amnesia? Yup, precisely. Poison, by the looks of it. But poison. This game did it first. I can't open it. So it's like the OG. Pretty much. Did it before it was cool. Yup. Oh, there we go. Uh -huh. All the dead bodies. It's all kicking off. Derping with my vision. The heroin's setting in. I can't handle it. LSD is happening. I can't handle it. Oh. <laughs> my. My hey, fragile psyche. A diary. This will make interesting much. reading. It's too much. Make it stop. But you had time to like look at that teacup. What a nut house. The walls what have been covered with glyphs. You're like going crazy, but your guy's dead calm. What a nut house. From a moment. You're uh, you're still going crazy. There we go. Whoa. Hello there. Mythos turns and manuscripts. <laughs> Diary of Occult Member. We have been watching now for two months. I can feel my anticipation growing as the days of contact draws near. Victor has not yet divulged his final plan for bringing Mr. Walters to us. All I know is that we must succeed. Thank God you're not Mr. Walters. <laughs> The sermon today was inspiring. Victor enlightened us with the story of the great race transcending the bounds of time to visit his dreams. With conscious things on this earth and in the ocean depths, we are but servants to a greater design. I can only hope that my faith during these last days will win me favor when our masters step through the gate. The experiments below have claimed one more of our order. Another volunteer is needed, but many are willing. We are truly blessed through our very faithful service. Now that his coming grows so close. The preparations are complete, and Victor's plan is in motion. He will arrive soon. Surely by now he must suspect his true nature, or at least question the nature of his gifts. He has come. Finally, it begins. So, that guy wrote that, like, right before you got here. Or, like, right as you got here. Yeah. Oh. Sneak attack, sneak attack, sneak attack, sneak attack. Don't oh. shoot! I'm unarmed. Ah, we've been expecting you, Mr. Bob. Oh. Oh. Uh, um. He's dead. Down. A key. Good coming handy. It's dead now. Oh, whoa. Good, good shooting, Cap. Yeah. Just distracted. By the bullet. It's, it's locked. It's, it's locked. It's locked. Kale, it's locked. The key doesn't. The key doesn't fit, Kale. What are you. What are you it's unlocked. To do? Oh, there we go. It's unlocked. What? Oh, look at all the pictures. They're of that night. Mr. Walter Boy. I don't understand. I'm in all of these photos. All of them. There I must be really some kind of mistake. Like why would they want me here? Feels like Sam. That must be an old Sam. case. Sam. Something I've forgotten. A screwball with a grudge, maybe. Think. I gotta think. Uh, uh. Yeah, when another I key. Old this should fit the door across the hall. It's unlocked. 
was too much. Wait, how did he know that was for the door across the hall? Same it appears to be a private study area. The drawer holds an ancient manuscript. The symbols on the front seem to be written in classical Greek. Classical this, Greek, you say? This guy's method of talking is just weird. So monotone. It is. He's like... Those of our readers who live near his headquarters, an ordinary looking Boston residence will need no introduction to the Fellowship of Youth, or whatever the cult's name is. For those who have not encountered this mysterious semi-religious group before, a few words of explanation are necessary. Since our country is founding upon the basis of religious freedom, its shores have been home to many small religious groups outside the mainstream. No small number are headquartered in the state of New England, where the pilgrims themselves sought a new world of free of religious persecution. But the question must be asked, at what point does a religion become a cult and its trusting adherents, not to mention its blameless neighbors, becoming victims? That is the question this journal poses in regard to the Fellowship of Jesus. In a month-long investigation, our interpret reporters have diligently sought out the truth behind this so-called church. Its origins are somewhat mysterious, the more so since the group's leaders declined to be interviewed or to assist our investigation in any way. However, it seems that the fellowship was founded more than 20 years ago by one Victor Holt, based on a revelation he had received from beyond the confines of this world. Holt has not been seen for almost six years. His followers apparently believe that he is communing with the mysterious powers behind his faith, and that he is shortly to return with new insights and teachings. All this sounds like a harmless, if eccentric, spiritual group, little different from many others. However, those who make their homes near to the Fellowship's headquarters tell a different, more sinister story. The adherents of this obscure sect are to be found loitering on the street corners, casting menacing glances at their nauseous neighbors, and frequently engaging in acts of petty crime, which the local police seem powerless to prevent or redress. Strange lights have been observed burning in the windows of the old house at all hours of the day and night. They change color unpredictably and cast weird, unintelligible shadows. Even more disturbing are the noises, which have been heard to issue from within the mysterious building. They include chanting, unearthly music, and worst of all, screams like those of lost souls in agony. Many of the sect's neighbors are convinced that its services include human sacrifice or similar atrocities. Those few who dared complain to the police were told that because the house is private property and because there is no concrete evidence of any wrongdoing, the most they can do is file a noise complaint. Are the horrors of Salem being reenacted in our city more than two centuries on? Is this fellowship of youth engaging in unspeakable and criminal acts of worship involving torture and sacrifice? Why is nothing being done to ease the fear and distress they cause the local community? A source within the police department, speaking on the condition of anonymity, tell the Globe that the Fellowship is suspected of involvement in a number of local crimes, but so far, the lack of evidence and the reluctance of nervous witnesses to come forward have thwarted any official investigation. Very well, we say. Where the police cannot or will not investigate, the Globe shall continue to act in the interest of Boston citizens, fearlessly exposing the truth about the so-called church and its followers. Our findings will be published in these pages over the following months, so that all may know the truth. Editor's note. It is with great sorrow that the Globe announces the death of reporter Howard Adelston, who was leading the paper's investigation into the Fellowship of Yeag when he apparently drowned in Boston Harbor. The coroner has ruled his death a suicide. Our condolences go out to his family. What? Wow, that's not suspicious at all. Not at all. Oh, wait, you're not? There are definitely some strange sounds coming from this side of the room. Yeah, that's pretty strange. Uh, uh, Shit, uh, that did uh, not sound uh, good. Uh, Gosh. Oh, like three well, that's steps just around. swell. Oh no, I can't climb up. Oh no, whatever will I do? You ain't going deeper. Or am I? Dude, just set a tent right here. Okay. Oh shit. Nope. 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 I'll not be dealing with any of this. Nope.
God, what the hell is all this? It looks like his brain. I wonder what those wires are for. Kidneys? What do we got over here? Why are they keeping these out of his body? His beating heart. The contraption above seems to be controlling his breathing. Looks like his stomach. seen equipment like this before. I don't know. Well, I did this one time at a rave. It's pretty standard, actually. <laughs> this tunnel feels like it's gonna collapse at any moment. Then why are you going deeper into it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah! It's too hot to pick up! Something's been removed from it. So chandly green thing. Bro. Super. Oh no. Now he just closed the exit. It's been more than six years since I entered that strange house in Boston. Yeah, half a year to go. But to me, it was just five months ago. Amnesia, the doctors called it. Probably brought on by acute mental stress. I remember investigating the far side of the library. There was screaming. According to the police report, they had searched the house for hours, only to find me later collapsed on the floor. When my eyes opened and I spoke, my colleagues recoiled in fear. There was something unnatural in my voice and blank gaze. They committed me to Arkham Asylum where I was diagnosed with severe schizophrenia. As it became clear that I presented no danger to either myself or others, I was released from the asylum's care. I have learned little of my activities in the six years that followed. The accounts I've been able to piece together show much of my time was spent in travel and study. I maintain a fanatical infatuation with the occult delving deep into volumes concerning witch cults and dark legends, often in languages unfamiliar to my own. When I reawakened five months ago, exactly six years after entering that house in Boston, no trace was left of what had been a secondary personality. I was myself again, or at least what I believed myself to be. Return to normal life has been a painful process. In recent days, my dreams have been plagued by cosmic landscapes, and I've become fearful of my own reflection. I am beginning to remember things from that day, more than six years past, that I've told myself. Answer your phone. 
Jack Walters. Uh, hello, Mr. Walters. My name's Arthur Anderson. I need your help finding a missing person. I don't take that kind of job. Uh, did this you get my package? Um, uh, hold on. <laughs> it's at the bottom of the ocean. Could you help me out? I lost track of the guy. Seems like an okay guy. He's pretty tall. Can't miss him. Did you give my package? Picks it up from the trash. What exactly do you want from me, Mr. Anderson? Didn't even realize there was money in it. Um, it's one of my store managers, you see. Brian's his name. Brian Burnham. Nice lad. He disappeared recently from the first national grocery store in Innsmouth. Innsmouth? I never heard of it. <laughs> Innsmouth. <laughs> uh, it's a small fishing town on the coast, not far from Arkham. Uh, I'd like to see you in person before you leave. Hold on there a minute. I didn't agree to take this j uh, What the hell? I'll be here all day anyway. Do you, do you not see the wad, the fat stack of cash there? I mean, shit, son. I mean, I've killed people for this. I have a new client. Mr. Arthur Anderson, the regional manager of the First National Grocery Store chain. It appears the First National Grocery in Innsmouth was recently burglarized. Its manager, one Brian Burnham, is missing. When I've been able to gather Burnham as something of a young rogue, a friend of the family, Mr. Anderson gave him a job as a favor. Burnham's looking like the prime suspect for the robbery, but there are a few things that don't add up. Not to Anderson, and not to me. For instance, why would Burn force entry into the store when he had a full set of keys, free access to the cash register, and the combination to the back office safe? To misdirect any investigation? If that was his plan, why did he disappear? Following my conversation with Mr. Anderson, I found out what I could about the ancient town of Innsmouth. For generations, the crumbling seaport and its people have been shunned by neighboring communities. Outsiders are unwelcome there, and there are superstitious tales of a strange element in the town's oldest families. They are of mixed blood, so the stories go, whatever that's supposed to mean. The usual hick, hick town prejudice, no doubt. Yeah. After making a brief visit to Innsmouth, my client came away distrustful of the local authorities. He isn't buying their line that Berman was robbed, and Berman robbed the place and wants to know what happened to him. Only one bus goes to Innsmouth, and tomorrow afternoon I'll be on it. Feels good to have a purpose after five months trying to break through my amnesia. I also feel a little apprehensive. Maybe it's the wild stories about the town, or maybe it's just because I haven't had a case in so long. Probably the fact that you had amnesia, been in a psych ward a handful of times, and probably an alcoholic, but hey, that's just my guess. What? <laughs> what? That has nothing to do with anything. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Washington Street. Oh, two can play this game, my friend. Two can play this game. <laughs> February 7th, 1922. That is a rickety ass stop. bus. Almost there. I'll drop you at the town square, my business. Yeah. Why lock the gates? Keeps out wanderers looking for work. We don't want those folks like that interfering with our affairs. Is the bus from Arkham always this empty? Aye, and we prefer it that way. Not many come to Innsmouth. But what about trade? Surely the port needs business. Innsmouth has the means to look after them alone. This guy sounds kind of odd. He does. Pac-Man's in the window! Pac-Man's in the window! Oh, I, I saw it. That's come for you. No head. This is it, Stranger. End of the line. End of the line. <laughs> it's not creepy at all. Nope. Broken mirror. All right, time for a totally normal investigation. Could you direct hey. me to the First National Grocery Store? I hear they have a shop in town. I don't know nothing about that. Oh well, 
You see, I'm looking for a young lad called Brian Burnham. I'm a friend of the family. He worked in the store. His eyes so, well, who are you like talking about, fella? Derp. I don't know nothing about Derp. Chit chatting to him is gonna get me no place fat. I don't know nothing about chit chat. <laughs> nothing of interest. I don't know. Oh, God. Oh.